Hi and welcome to TMG Move Reviews. I'm Rick. I'm Andrew and today we have the great pleasure of discussing 1988's Die Hard directed by John McTiernan and starring Bruce Willis and based on the novel Nothing Lasts Forever by Roderick Thorpe. Yeah, um, what did you think of the film? I love it. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I, you know, I've loved Die Hard for a couple more years than I can remember and I won't go through all the boring back details. I just want to tell you about the story if you don't know it. Um, of course the Nakatomi Corporation is having their Christmas party and a lone cop comes in from LA to visit his estranged wife. Terrorists take over the building and our friend John McClane must stop them armed with nothing more than a handgun, a couple of wisecracks, and the best way of getting down an elevator shaft I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. And one of the things I really like about this film, and I have realised about it the first time seeing it, is because Bruce Willis is not this, he's not the Arnold Schwarzenegger Sylvester Sloan action hero. No, he's he's vulnerable. He's got a vulnerability about him, like the first scene we see him in, he's scared of flying. He's, he seems a bit sort of wary about getting on the plane and then we see him um, sort of they progress his character, they tell us who his character is in the first 10 minutes of the film. So you know that and they get that out of the way, but they do it really well. When he gets to see Argyle, the limo driver, um, he sits up front with him. He doesn't want to sit in the back because he, he's just he's not that sort of person. So you, you instantly get these little clues as to who he is. Then he gets to Nakatomi Towers and um, he starts putting his inputting his wife's name on the computer and it's not showing up under McLean. So then he realizes that it's, she's gone back to a maiden name and you you just sort of like right okay this is a down to earth guy he's a police officer he's um he's having some problems in his marriage and they just get all of it out of the way sort of so subtly it's not rammed down your throat but you know who he is going in. Yeah, it's, that's what's brilliant about it. It's a film that's very economical. It doesn't waste time giving you acres and acres of backstory. You know who John McClane is from the minute. He gets in the back of that taxi, has that little speech, you know, in comes well because there's New York scumbags and New York cop, you know, I can't just walk away. And he doesn't walk away. I mean, he puts himself through the most, some of the most terrifying things that I, you, you could imagine a man having to do. You know, there's that sequence, of course, him climbing down the shaft using just the strap of his machine gun to climb down. You see him running across broken glass and then that brilliant scene where he's literally on the sink picking broken glass out of the soles of his feet and telling his friend there on the other end of the line, our pal, about, you know, I love my wife, I'm so sorry about, you know, I'm a complete jerk, you know, you know, it's just brilliant. It's brilliant acting from a man that, you know, a lot of people underrate Bruce Willis as, a, as an actor, but he is, he's really, and he's perfectly safe. If Arnold Schwarzenegger played this part, I don't think it would have had quite the same, no. the same effect. No, it'd have been, everything would have just been expected, they'd have never shown any fear, I wouldn't have thought, so mm. just, Bruce Willis is just brilliant in the role and like you said about Al, that's his only friend in the whole film and the only sort of person he seems to speak to because Bruce Willis is basically acting, he's so good in this movie and 90% of the movie, he's on his own. Yeah, he's on his own. <laughs> he's just by himself and he's just sort of talking and just coming out with dialogue to himself and most of it's just sort of talking himself through the crazy things that he's doing and not... Mm. Sort of, he doesn't believe that he's doing them because he knows how stupid they are, he knows how risky they are, but he still does them because it's what needs to be done at the time. Yeah, and and it's just, it's, it's so cool for that reason. Yeah, I love it. My favourite sequence, I'm sure everyone has a favourite, my favourite sequence in the whole movie is he's on the roof and uh, the FBI snipers, Johnson and Johnson, are going to take him out. So he ties the hose round his waist and he leaps off a building. So he skydives off and he's trying to kick the window, he doesn't go, so he blasts the, pulls his gun out, blasts the window and he flies, abseils through it and it's awesome. Yeah. There is one, my main problem with Die Hard, and I have very few problems with it, but the fact, he goes through all this, I mean, you know, there's several fights, there's several sequences where clearly severe damage is done, but it doesn't seem to affect him at any no. point, you know, I'm sure about three points of the problem, his nose is broken. But you do see him at the, that, that end scene, just as, as he's sort of, the confrontation scene where he's finally going to meet sort of Hans, yeah. and um, you see him sort of, he looks like a zombie. <laughs> he's like coming around the corner with all the uh, fire behind it. It's a brilliant shot, yeah. and he just looks like a man who's just been through hell. <laughs> um, one of the things I do have to say about this film is, with any sort of action film, you can only have a hero that's as good as a villain. It's and cool. Alan Rickman, playing Hans Gruber, is absolutely amazing he's a brilliant villain he's intelligent he's charismatic he's he's just such a good rival for bruce willis's yeah. john mcclain i mean he's the absolute opposite of mcclain hans is obviously he wears a sharp uh, john phillips suit you know he speaks in long you know as holly says there's so much posturing you know little speeches and then you've got mcclain on the other end of the line with his wise cracks and cigarettes and it's just it's a brilliant counterpoint and i think of all the villains 
in any of the Die Hard films, you definitely Alan Rickman stands head, head and shoulders above everybody else. I think as well, the villains, the sort of the foreign villains, an interesting point, the, the German they're speaking in the film, it apparently it's meaningless, it's not real German. Really? Yeah, which was really weird. I read that in, um, I think I read it in Empire they were talking about, it. it's apparently it's grammatically incorrect and it doesn't make any sense. I think that's why there are no subtitles at any point. But I think, especially, I think, what do you think of Carl? Because Carl's quite terrifying, isn't he? Yeah, Carl, he has a bit of a look of Dolph Lundgren. He does, doesn't he? With that long blonde hair and that tan. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he's definitely sort of the good enemy because you know um, it's the intellectual enemy against him is Hans Gruber. Yeah. But Hans Gruber is not a physical threat to John McClane without a gun. No. So they, they've got this, they've got the character of Carl to sort of take that place and yeah, he's scary. I mean, yeah. even the sort of other henchmen sort of seem to terror around him. Yeah, I know, that's what's brilliant. And finally, that big confrontation between Carl and uh, <coughs> McLean, where you know, Carl lays it out, we're both professionals, but this is personal. And so I love that fist fight between them. And McLean's that brilliant one, he's smashing Carl's head into the uh, the long copper pipes, and he says, I heard your brother squeal, and I broke your effing neck. Yeah. And I broke his effing neck. Right? But the, the film's just full of one line. Yeah. It's, like, it's one after the other. You could literally, the quotes in this film, I'm sure if you went on IMDb and went under the quote section, you'd be there for quite a while. <laughs> one of the things I really like about it is that even the sort of, they've, they've stacked him in this building, everyone in the building's against him with the terrorists, and then even the police outside the building. I mean, not not the sort of street cops, they seem to be more on this side, but the FBI come in, they're all against him. The um, the chief of police, he's against him. It's just, it just sort of pile it on to the only point in the film, there's only two people. Um, his wife, who you don't really see, sort yeah. of have any interaction with him until the end, mm. um, and then obviously Al, who's his only like companion for the whole thing. Yeah, I think without Al, it wouldn't have. Because obviously, I, I think the play needs someone to sort of bounce off. So I think it was a really good decision to bring Al in. Yeah. When, when you bring Al in, it sort of gives brings um, brings heart to the story and lets him sort of talk about, like you said, talk about his marriage, talk about um, his wife and things he's done wrong. So yeah, it, it sort of brings that. Yeah, I think that's why maybe Die Hard 2 is good, which I do like Die Hard 2 a lot, but I think that's why it isn't quite as good, because it doesn't have a springboard from McLean. He is on his own throughout the whole film. For me, this is like one of the best action films ever made. Um, I'm going to have to give it a five, I can't. I have to give it a five. I've loved Die Hard since I think I first saw it. Maybe far too young, like nine or ten, and I used to wear my vest and walk around with a toy gun pretending to be McLean. <laughs> Awesome. I still do that now actually with my girlfriend oh. yeah. <laughs> but no it's, it's a brilliant film and it is yeah it's violent as a fair bit of, of rude language but yeah definitely a five from me and a film that I will con love as much as I love sort of the older films that reviewed like Batman and Back to the Future film I grew up with and always enjoy yeah if you haven't seen this film definitely check it out it doesn't age at all no. um, it's still just as good today as when first time I watched it so, yeah, um, let us know what you, you thought of it in the comments below. Yeah, great, and thank you very much, and we hope you enjoy Die Hard. Thanks a lot. Bye, Bye now.